In this video, I'm going to show how to compare effect of drug over time between two groups. So this is a typical analysis and you would use for randomized clinical trial with two arms and outcomes are measured over time. And this is a today's motivating example. And uh, so this is a placebo controlled trial of amantadine for severe traumatic brain injury. And so this study enrolled 184 patients and who were in average or minimally conscious states 4 to 16 weeks after traumatic brain injury. They have a randomized two treatment with amatadine and other half patients were randomized to placebo. The rate of functional recovery on the disability rating scale measured by DRS was compared over the four weeks of treatment, okay, which is the primary outcome, and uh, during the two weeks for short period with the use of mixed effect regression model. Okay. And so, uh, so they did use a mixed effect regression model to compare a rate of change on DRS scale between two groups. Okay, so let's um, let's look at the analysis they conducted in a little bit more detail. This is what they stated in statistical analysis section. Uh, we used mixed effect regression model with random intercept to test the primary and secondary hypothesis of a difference in the rate of change in the DRS score between amantadine and placebo groups overall in in stride 5 subgroups. So this is the result uh, they have. So what they did is they conducted mixed effect model using random intercept and then it's, so that means each patient do have a different intercept and each intercept are considered randomly distributed with the mean and the standard deviation estimated based on the data. And what they did is that they put the weeks variable as a continuous variable. So the slope indicate change per one unit, which is a week, right? So the slope indicate average rate of change in DRS per week, right? And in order to compare the rate of change between two groups, two groups, what they did is that they included the cross product term between treatment assignment and time variable, which is weeks and assess p-value for the interaction. And uh, p-value for interactions was actually significant and therefore in the result they stated that there was a difference in slope. So average weekly rate of change in DRS is 0.24 points. And the p-value was 0.007. So this p-value is from uh, p-value for the cross product term in the regression. Okay. and which indicate benefit with respect to primary outcome measurement by amantadine. Okay. So that was a conclusion of their study. Okay. So we are going to repeat the analysis and of course we don't have access to their data so we do use our classroom data set. So data set we have is a dental growth measured and uh, we are going to assess rate of change in dental growth measurement between boys and girls. Okay, and so we have two groups to compare and primary outcome is rate of change in uh, outcome variable over time. Okay, so that's a similar setting to the paper we just saw. So before we conduct mixed effect model with random intercept, and then let's go ahead to perform linear regression. And that is obviously wrong analysis, but I want you to see what happened if we ignore repeated nature of the data and simply treat all the observations are from different patients, okay? And then see what happened, okay? So this is the data set, and this effect model, again, require a longitudinal format. And today we are going to compare change of slope of gross measure between girls and boys. So we are going to use data from boys today. Okay. So let's uh, perform linear regression, which is a long, wrong analysis, but I want to see what happens. So let's use GLM to do linear regression. So you go to GLM and you numerate. 
and the outcome variable is growth. And we want to see the rate of change uh, by age for every age increase. So age is treated as continuous variable, right? Because we have to put the straight line over age. And uh, we put the sex under covariate. Sex is coded 0, 1, so it's binary. And you don't have to put in a factor, right? And then go to model. And today we do need to include cross product. So uh, let's put the cross product term. Order doesn't really matter, so you can put the induction term first. But I, I do have a habit of put the main effect first, and then interaction. Again, order doesn't matter. It's just my habit. Okay, and then click continue. And we need a parameter estimate. So you click on options and click on parameter estimates. Okay, and continue. And let's click OK. So this is what SPSS did. So if I graphically show what SPSS just did, and I can do scatter plots. So today we have boys and girls. So we put this scatter plot with different colors. So we put the sex with different color. And age grows here and then growth grows here. And then uh, today age need to be treated as continuous variable because we want to put straight line. So let's convert age to scale. So you just click on mouse uh, right button and then change nominal. It was nominal and change it to scale. Okay, so now you put the age in the x-axis and go ahead to click OK. And SPS has created scatter plots, and then I want to put the two regression lines. So let's double click and go to chart editors. Um, chart editor. And uh, to fit regression line within each subgroup, and you click this button add fit line at subgroups. And then I want to see confidence interval. So let's click mean and apply. All right, so now you have confidence interval. So what we did with linear regression is you know, we compare, so, so this p-value for induction compare difference in two slopes. And so um, this beta coefficient for age indicate rate of change among reference category, which is a female group. Okay? And then uh, you add this 0.49 with 0.294 and that gives slopes for boys. Okay, And uh, this p-value is testing whether those two slopes are the same or not. Okay? And because if you add these two number and that become boys slope, which means this 0.294 is really the difference between slope for girls and slope for boys. And if you want to confirm this, then you may split the file, split file by gender. And then we can actually do linear regression separately for boys and girls. And that will give you uh, two different slopes, one for girls and one for boys. So uh, we are again still in linear regression. And we know it's wrong analysis, but I want you to link between linear regression to mix the effect model. So, uh, we are doing that with linear regression first. Okay, so here um, we split by sex, so you don't have to worry about sex in the equation anymore. And then you click OK. So this uh, result is a simple linear regression uh, by age and within girls. So as you see, slope for girls is 0.49 and p-value is 0 0.023. And slope for boys is 0.784, and uh, p-value is less than 0.0001. Okay, so that that much. And yes, if you add 0 0.49 and 0 0.294, and you should get 7.84, which is this number. All right. So if you do linear regression. Each of a slope rate of change over time is significant, although when you compare these two slopes, an 
and it was not statistically significant. Okay. All right. So uh, now we are going to. So we know this analysis is wrong because we ignored these observations or some observations are coming from the same patient, the same girl or boy, right? And so we have to tell SPSS which observations are coming from the same boy or girl. So uh, we are going to redo analysis using mixed effect model. Right? So just as we saw in motivating example, so today we do use random effect approach. So we don't worry about correlation, but we do model between patient variation by introducing random intercept. So therefore, uh, we are in the linear mixed effect model now and we will ignore this repeat box. All right, so let's go to mixed model linear. All right, and put ID under subject, and we will ignore this repeated box today because we are now going to worry about correlation uh, instead, and we model patient between patient variation by introducing random intercept. So continue, and this box is exactly the same as uh, GLM and the only difference is you have random uh, box now. Uh, so you put the growth as dependent variable and age goes to covariate and sex goes to covariate. And go ahead to click uh, fix box. And this is the same as model box in GLM. And you put, so keep it as a default build terms and first we put the main effect and then now uh, we want interaction. If you want a shortcut, you might just click factorial button and this will create interaction plus all lower order terminology. Okay, and click continue. And what else? We click on statistics and we need a parameter estimate. And let's continue. And uh, if you want to check registrals, and you can go ahead to create registrals. Okay. And I also want to see predicted values. And, and the important thing, we need to click on random box. Okay, so we want to put the random intercept. So click on include intercept, and we. Um, we put ID under combinations box, okay? And we are ready. And continue and okay. So by modeling between patient difference by introducing random intercept, this model actually detected difference in two slopes. And difference in two slopes is actually the same. So you see the parameter estimate. This is exactly the same as we saw in linear regression, but now we have a different p-value, totally different. So with linear regression, p-value for the interaction was not significant, and it was actually 0.155, but uh, because probability computation ignore what observations are coming from same uh, boy or girl. This model with mixed effect model actually handled uh, repeated measure between patient variation nicely. So uh, you have a significant p value here. Okay. And then so let's, uh, let's check what the model did. So if you want to check, and you can go to graph chart builder, and I want to see output from this model. So we're going to plot predicted value of this model. So we want to use line and uh, okay. so if you want predicted value for each boy and girl, you grab this one, p pred underscore one and age we have to change it to continuous variable and sex goes uh, not sex id uh, right, we need id here Probably you have to do sex in the panel variable and put sex under panel and click OK. All right. 
So this is what the model did. So each boy or girl have a different intersect, but we allow only one slope, common slope, within girls and within boys. So what the p-value for the interaction term did, which is 0 0.023 did, is compare whether these two slopes are the same or not. Okay, so the difference in two slopes are actually 0.29 millimeter per year change. And so that was statistically significant. And now you might wonder what happened if we introduce random slopes. Okay, because original data indicates slopes are slightly different among uh, children. So let's check. So you go to mixed effect model linear. So now we want to introduce random interest random slopes in addition to random intercept. Okay, so you put age in this box and uh, here. This is a trick, right? We need to select unstructured for covariance correlation between intercept and slopes. Right, and then click continue and OK. So when we introduce random slopes and p-value is still significant, which is 0 0.048. Story is the same, but we want to choose which model is more valid. So let's check AIC. AIC from the model with random intercept and slopes are 426.7, and AIC from the model with random intercept is 423.938. So we would choose a model providing smaller AIC, which is the model with only random intercept. Okay. So this is our final uh, story. So let's see what the model with random intercept and slope did. So go to chart builder, and now we put predicted value. We replace predicted value from the new model. Okay, so as you see, each child has slightly different slopes, and which the model considers slopes are also randomly distributed uh, with normal distribution with mean and standard deviation estimated based on data, separately for girls and boys. And model uh, detected average slopes difference by p value for the interaction.